Once again, good morning. And it's still great to be in the house of God. I got the opportunity whenever I get to, uh, Brother Albert find a way to get him out of town and get to take over for a week. It's exciting. Actually, two weeks. Don't tell him. Uh, he, uh, I just pray that he you know, gets to enjoy his vacation over there. He deserves it. He, he puts a lot in, and, and we definitely appreciate him. Uh, and I appreciate the opportunity to, to be up here. It's always a blessing to be, be able to bring the Word of God to you. It's not just that I'm up here preaching to you, but God preaches to me. You know, and he speaks to me. And, and as I'm studying and preparing for the message, you know, I try to see what, what is God telling me? Make it personal. And, you know, and God's an awesome God. The way he works, the way he works through us, you know, different of us are different. You, we all have different ministries. We all have different parts. Some of us are not my, maybe not active in those parts. That's something that we can visit one day. But we all have a role. We all have something. And so our God is an awesome God. And I'm excited to be able to be here this morning. So this morning, the title is going to be Unchanged, but I'm going to talk about change. But there's too many of us that are unchanged, and that's what I want to talk about this morning. We're going to be in 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. And you know, I, I get excited. We go to, you know, in the past, youth camps and see kids moving, see the Holy Spirit moving. We have church revivals. You see the Holy Spirit moving. You see people coming forward. You see change. You know, exciting things. You see people come forward and, you know, pouring their hearts out. You know, they feel God's moving in their lives. They're coming and, and just taking a, a bundle of, of burdens that's on their shoulders. You know, we carry these, these burdens with us, these sins, and come and take them to the cross and see God moving. You see, see him moving, you know, going back to our camps and VBS, and you see God moving and people changing. But here's what gets me. You see people come forward. You see them with tears. You see them broken. You see them excited about Jesus. You see them come back with this zeal for about a week, two weeks. And then goes, go back to the old way of life, the same old sinful habits, the same old sinful nature taking charge in their lives. And I see this, and I see people come forward like that, and then I see the same person that I saw before. I saw no change. What does that say? Does God not have the power to change people? Yeah, he's got power to change people. But he doesn't just get us and jerk us and pull us. and He'll, he'll mold us, he'll shape us, he'll work on us for sure. But you see, he wants us to submit to him. He, he wants surrender. He wants us to change in heart. And that's what we're going to talk about this, this morning, is not to walk away unchanged. When you leave this service this morning, I don't want you to leave unchanged. I want you to have some kind of change. I want God to speak to you this morning. And I pray that he uses me. I'm just, the, I'm just the mailman. I just deliver the message. So if you get excited about it and say, man, this is really good, praise to Jesus. If you're mad at me, you don't like the words that are coming, you're convicted, thank you, Jesus, because he's going to do a work in you. It's all about him. So I, I empty myself for, for him to work through me. And that's my prayer this morning, that he will, he will not let you leave this place unchanged. Our scripture, if you'll stand with me. 2 Corinthians 5.17 It says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we, we come before you humbly this morning, Lord. This is your church. This is your service. We are your people, Lord. I pray that you just speak through me this morning, Lord. Hide me behind the cross. Fill my heart with your spirit. Fill my mouth with your words, Lord. And Lord, let it be a message that speaks to us all, that will draw us closer to you. And I pray if there's any, this, any here this morning that does not know you as our Savior, Lord, let this be the day that hear your gospel and believe and receive your Son, Jesus Christ, as our Savior. We cast Satan away from here because we know Satan is going to try and distract. He's going to try and discourage. We cast him away from here now, Lord. Let your word be spoken this morning. In the sanctuary, in the church, in the uh, Sunday school classes taking place around us. Just send your Holy Spirit. Fill every inch of this campus. Classrooms, church buildings, restrooms, parking lot. Let your spirit be here and work this morning, Lord. Let your will be done. These things we ask you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. All right, you may be seated. And it is my prayer that nobody leaves here unchanged this morning. And it's not by me. It's not what I can do. It's not my power. 
but in God's power. You know, God doesn't just, you know, when you think about salvation, somebody comes to Christ, they're excited about that, you know, they, they see hope, they see opportunity. I can let those things go that were in my past, those things that bonded me, those things that had me bound, those chains are broken free, and we get excited about that. And that change that comes, that change I talk about, when I say I want to see you leave here changed, it doesn't mean that I don't believe you're not saved. What it means is, yeah, if you're not saved, I want you to be changed and accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior and let him begin a new work. But you know what? When, we, when I got saved, God didn't say, okay, you're saved. Here's your tickets for heaven. I'll see you there and turn around. And I don't never see him again until that day comes when I go to heaven. Because he starts right here, right now. That change is a daily process. I'm daily changing. God allows things to happen to me. You know, the, the, the up over the mountains, the high things, the exciting things, down in the valleys, the things that, that want to pull you down, the things that, um, that are painful, that are hurt. But God uses all those things for change, to grow us, to help us, to mold us, to help us to be who he designed us to be. Each and every one of us has a role in here. You all have a part. You all have an opportunity to serve God. How can I say that? Scripture tells us that everything that was created. First of all, can you agree on this? Were you created one day? Anybody here not created? You sit and sit, you simply, maybe the chairs that are empty. But you're here. We were all created. Scripture tells us that we were all created by him. But there's another piece to it. We were all created for him. You, whoever you are, wherever you've been, Whatever you've done, whatever the most horrible of sins you may have committed, you were created for God. Are you going to fulfill that purpose in your life? That's up to you. Because God says, I got the purpose for you. I've got a reason for you. I have a plan for you. But are you going to get on board? Are you going to join me? Are you going to be willing to be changed? Don't sit there unchanged. It's a daily process. I surrendered, I, well, I got saved at 12. Surrendered to the ministry several years ago. Can't even count anymore. But God doesn't just have me sitting on a shelf. I could choose to sit on a shelf. I tried to sit on a shelf at one time. That sounds kind of funny, I know. But God said, no, I've got a plan for you. And he pushed me out there. And he's got a plan for each and every one of us. Are you willing to accept the change? And, and as I said that, since I got saved, since I surrendered to the ministry, many things have happened in my life where God has changed me along the way. Sometimes that I fight, yeah. Sometimes that I say, no, Lord, that's not the way I want it, yeah. Any of us not do that sometimes? Because we want things our way? It's surrender, it's submission. Okay, Lord, whatever you want. I finally come to a place in my life where I say, okay, Lord, whatever you want for my life, I'm tired of making plans because you always change them for me. But you know what? They're always better than what I had in mind. Because we serve a good God. We serve an awesome God. But we got to start with change. we got to start by saying, Lord, you take over. What are your plans for my life? Don't sit there unchanged. And don't sit there and tell me, well, I've committed. You know, I, I always hear these excuses. When I was little, I heard my mom and my dad telling somebody, Inviting him to church. I can't go to church. The church will fall in. I have not seen a church falling yet because someone entered into it with sin. Have you? Okay, the towels are still up. We're, we're in good shape. There's a couple of sinners in here, I think, right? <laughs> okay, everybody who has a sin, raise your hand. Oh, we got a couple of honest people. <laughs> and the rest of you. <laughs> but that's an excuse. I like to look back at Paul because I think, who is the worst sinner of all? And then I look in the mirror. But then I read about Paul. And I wonder, wait, did I sin as bad as Paul? It doesn't matter, sin is sin. But when you look at Paul, what was Paul's mission in life? He had zeal. He had gusto. He was going after something. He was going after the church. Someone who's persecuting God's people. To slaughter God's people. Who wrote a good portion of this book? 
We know it was God, but who did God work through? Paul, right? And he starts out as Saul. So I like to look at that first thing about change. It takes an encounter with Jesus Christ. You want change? Are you tired of these old, those old habits? Are you tired of, of those old you know, things that hang you up, that cause you to stumble? Those things that are addictions? Are you tired of those things? Do you want change? It's going to begin with Jesus Christ. That's where it started with Paul. And it didn't matter how bad he was, what he'd done. God said, I got a plan for him. He is chosen. And as he had the letters going to Damascus, letters from the priest with permission to persecute the way, the people of the way. What is the way? It was in other words for Christians, Christ followers. We were on the right way. And he had letters to persecute them. But that one encounter with Jesus Christ, that created change. He was blinded. This bright light flashed around him. Knocked to the ground. And when they helped him get up and he opened his eyes, he saw nothing. Could you imagine? You're on this mission. You know where you're going. You know what you're going to do. And all of a sudden, everything's just changed. And when Jesus spoke to him, he says, Saul, Saul, why persecutest me, thou me? He heard those words. He says, Lord. And in my Bible, that Lord is capital, Lord. Saul at that moment, he knew he was messing with the wrong person. Actually messing with the right person because he would get him on the right track. It was a capital L. He acknowledged who Jesus was. Lord, who are you? I'm Jesus, the one you persecuted. Well, could you imagine the conviction in that? Imagine God just knocks you off your high horse, knocks you down from whatever you're doing. And when you say, who are you? Who's this voice that I'm hearing? And he says, I'm Jesus. I'm the one you persecuted. I think there's some conviction going on there. I feel convicted thinking about it because you know what? We all persecuted Jesus. It wasn't just Saul. It wasn't just the Roman soldiers. It wasn't just some men back in history. If you've got sin in your life, if you have sinned, you were one of those who persecuted Jesus. And we all fall in that category. That's why Jesus Christ came to this earth. God came in as Jesus Christ to bring change. Anybody ready for some change? But it took that one encounter that would change everything with Jesus Christ. How many of you know somebody who was on a road to destruction? Somebody who was just like tearing things up, ruining their lives, and then you see Jesus come in and then you saw change. Anybody witness that? Anybody experience that? I hope so. Because that's what he does. God is in the business of change. He doesn't want to leave you unchanged. And every day he will work on you. And every day he will bring more change to you when you're willing. When you're willing to get into his word. When you're, ready, when you're willing and ready to submit and surrender those old things. The old things that are going to pass away. Can I get an amen on that? And to become a new creature. When I go back, or we'll go back and look at Acts. You know, this is the story of Saul. When he went from Saul to Paul. And the first verse, in verse 9, it says, And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired him of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. Saul was on a mission. He had a direction. He was going one direction. An encounter with Jesus Christ. And then we're going to go down a couple of verses to verse 9. Uh, what verse was it? And the crowd goes silent. 
in verse 6. So we go from this zeal of persecuting the church with this mission. And now in verse 6, and he trembling, talking about Saul, trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? Now you see the surrender? Lord, what do you want me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. So we see a change already from this attitude, from persecuting people who are following Jesus to now, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do? Do we have that kind of change in our lives? We're going one direction. We're fulfilling our mission. And when I say our mission, I mean our personal mission, what we think we want to do, our goals. But then we change from that to when we come to Jesus Christ, now I want to know what God wants me to do. Do you get up in the morning? Do you ever have a prayer where you say, say Lord, what do you want for me to do? Do you face your choices and the decisions that, that you're coming up upon? And do you make your little list of the pros and cons? Or do you first go to God and say, okay, God, what do you want for me? Making your list of pros and cons, that's great. But where's it going to fit in with God? That's why we go to God first. Lord, what is your will for my life? you got to be ready to sur surrender because sometimes he's going to say, the will I have for you is totally opposite of what you want. And it might not even look attractive. It might not look like fun. But God says, I promise you, it will get you where I want you. It will get you where I need you to be. And that is the best thing for you. Do you have faith in God? Do you trust that God has your best interest at heart? Yes. It always comes back to glorifying him. Bottom line is, that should be our purpose. But do we trust that he knows what's best? And that's where we have to learn to let go. If you really want change, you've got to learn to let go. Let go of the old things. Let go of the old habits. You know, we get so set in our traditions. I want to keep doing it this way because I've always done it this way. What if Saul said, I've always done it this way. I'm going to keep on. But see, God used him. He was chosen. Just as I told you a while ago, you're chosen. But what is your response going to be? Just like Saul. Lord, what do you want me to do? I surrender to you. And just by proclaiming, who are you, Lord? Just that alone says, Lord, I'm, I'm submitting myself to you. I bow down to you. Because you are my Lord. You are the one who will guide me. You are the one who will lead me. You are the one that I want to do everything for. And we've got to stop and think. Go back and think about the cross. He surrendered for you. He submitted for you. In obedience to God the Father. Because of the love that he had for each and every one of us in here. No matter how bad the sin was. That he would do that. That should excite us. That should inspire us. If he did that for me, I can at least follow in his footsteps. I can at least read his word and apply it to my life. But do you want that? Do you want that change? Do you have that zeal? Do you have that desire? And I can tell you something about desires. We will get desires in our heart that I don't know where they come from sometimes. Sometimes from a commercial, I desire water burger. I desire, you know, <laughs> we have the world giving us all these ideas. You turn on the news, you turn on the TV, they're going to hit you with something. And they're going to try to plant seeds of desires. And Satan, exactly, Satan will plant seeds and try to get you, convince you to do the things of the world. To accept the things of the world. That desire. I've learned. Lord God, say this prayer with me. Lord God, give me your desire. Lord God, give me your desires. Pray it and watch it happen. I can tell you I've had days where it's like, I'm burnt out. I'm tired. I don't want to get ready for this. I don't want to do that. I don't want to go witness. I don't want to, you know, we all have those days. That's when you hit your knees. Lord God, change my desires. Touch me right now. And I can tell you when I pray that, before you know it, I'm all excited, pumped up for Jesus and, and, and ready to go. And it's kind of, I get that little tap. Remember you asked for this? Here it is. Ask and you shall receive. So if your heart's not quite where you think it should be, if you don't feel that zeal, that excitement, 
that, that desire for change, to move closer to God, to deliver that message of God, ask God to give you the desire. And then ask him to give you that opportunity and the words to say, the actions to do, to fulfill his will. And watch how he works in your life. Watch how he brings change. Get this. Not only does he change you, but think about your family members, your children, parents maybe, co-workers. I could go on and on. Think about the people around you that witnessed this change in your life. You know, people saw Saul coming. Clear the way. Here comes Saul. He's preaching Jesus. These people were like, what? They witnessed a change. They saw a man who was persecuting Christians go from persecuting Christians to spreading the word, willing to die for Christianity, for Jesus Christ. They witness change. Do the people around you that live in your circle, that see your comments on Facebook, do they see that same change? Are you that witness that says, hey, man, Jesus is the business of change. He changed me, and he's changing me every day. And he can change you too. Sometimes we just got to be consistent in serving our Lord. I say sometimes, all the time. And you become witnesses just with that alone. Because we serve a mighty and a powerful God. So what works are we doing? Who are we representing? Is it apparent in your life? Is it apparent in the things that you do and the choices that you made, that you make daily? You know, without question, we saw change in Saul, going from Saul to Paul. And it's all by grace. It's not by the things you're doing. I'm not here to tell you, you know, to, to start changing your life by just doing things differently. Start change by going to God first and rely on his grace that he forgives you for the sin that you've committed before when you repent and you turn from it and it begins a new work in you. And you know, you saw when he was blinded and they picked him up and they led him because he couldn't see. Scripture says he was there for three days. Three days. It says no food, no drink. Think about that time alone. You ever seen your child to the room? Go to your room and think about what you've done. Have you ever been told, go to your room and think about what you've done? Has God ever said, go to your room and think about what you've done? When you take time and you stop and you reflect back, the sin in my life, sin that you might be doing right now, sinful lifestyle, sin, uh, sinful habits, things that you can't seem to quite get away from, when you stop and think about that sin and have that quiet time alone with God, let the consequences of those sins, let the burden of those sins, the realization of how bad those sins are soak in. And I don't say that to make you feel bad, but sometimes we, we, can't, we need conviction. We need to be convicted of the sin, convicted in a way where we're, there's remorse, true remorse. You cannot live a life in Jesus Christ and say, I've got Jesus. And come to church and worship and have real change. But then go back out those doors and you're going back to doing the same things that you did before. The same sinful natures. That sinful nature, yes, it's there. Temptation, yes, it's there. But with Jesus Christ, you have the power to overcome that. There is no sin in your life that's too big, that's too addictive, that cannot be overcame by Jesus Christ. If you're fighting it and you can't fight it, you can't get through it, it's because you're trying to do it on your own. You want change, but you're not changing. You're trying to do it on your own. Take it to Jesus Christ. Lay it on the, at the cross. Say, Lord God, I surrender. But you see, don't do it with half a heart because he knows what's in our heart. When I say, Lord, change my desires, but I'm really going to hold on to this one right here. I've already got my mind set on it. I've got my heart set on it. So I'm just going to hold on to this one. But, Lord, you can take it from me. He's not going to come up there and pull and tug. And he's going to say, open your hand. 
whatever you've got in there, that little candy tastes so great, so sweet, my favorite candy, but it's got poison in the middle of it. He says, open your hand. Okay, Lord. One little finger. Open it. Let him take what's there because he knows what's inside of that. Let him toss it out. You know what? God is not going to leave you empty-handed. He's going to put a blessing in there. He's going to replace that with something far better. But he's waiting for submission. Submission. He's waiting for surrender. He's waiting for you to say, okay, Lord, I trust you. If this is bad for me, here, take it. I don't want it. The flesh might want it, but I don't want it. My spirit doesn't want it. So, Lord God, I'm going to depend on you that you'll take that and you'll take it away. And let it be gone. And you know, he, when you come to Christ, receive Jesus Christ. And I mean truly, not just go through the motions. Scripture talks about the Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians 21 and 22. It says, Now he which establisheth us with you in Christ and hath ordained, anointed us is God. Right? God, who has also sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. The Spirit, that's the capital, the Holy Spirit. So we receive that Holy Spirit, right? So when you've got Christ, you receive that Holy Spirit. That brings a change. That's going to bring a change. So when I say you can't have Jesus Christ in your life, say you're going to follow Him and continue living in sin. Because that Holy Spirit will bring a conviction. John, I'm going to jump over here to John. And I lost my place, so give me one second to get there. First John, actually. I think it was first John. Take that back. Going to John. John chapter 16. Verse 8. Talking about the Holy Spirit, Jesus says, And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin. In other words, if you've got the Holy Spirit, he's going to reprove. He's going to correct. He's going to bring to your attention that sin. So how can someone say, I'm a Christian. I believe in Jesus Christ. But they go out and live like the world. They live in sin. They continue in things that the Scripture says, do not do this. Do not live this way. Do not hang around these people. Do not... Use that kind of language. How can I say, I've got Jesus Christ, but I'm still going to do those things? Then I'm calling Scripture a lie. Because it says, the Holy Spirit will come in and it will bring conviction. You will feel guilt. You will feel remorse. And I can tell you from experience, when I get around the sinful, and this doesn't mean anything on me. This is the God in me. When I get around something that I know I shouldn't be, when I get around something that the Bible says, don't do that, stay away from it, when I'm there, Man, I'm like this. I want to get away. What is that? The Holy Spirit's conviction saying, get away from the sin. This offends God. Let me ask you this. You've got change. You've got Jesus Christ in your life. Does sin offend you? Sin offends God. It grieved God. When we go all the way back to Genesis, the first flood, Scripture said this, God looked down. He saw the sin that people were committing. And that sin, he says, God says, it grieved him. How do I grieve God? I'm just a person. Out of millions and billions and trillions of souls that have been created, I grieve God when I sin, when I live in sin. I allow sin into my life. It grieves him. When I see sin around me, when I see my children or friends or whoever in sin, yeah, it hurts because I know they're offending God. That same sin offends me because God lives in me. So I just want to leave you with this little note. If you're okay with the sin, you can sit there and flip through the channels and watch nasty stuff on TV, shows that are immoral, pushing the agenda of the world. You can listen to the foul language and the dirty jokes. And you walk away <laughs> and you're not convicted of it. It doesn't offend you. 
I want to plead with you right now. Ask Jesus Christ, where is the Holy Spirit in me? Do I really know you as my Savior? Because if I really knew Jesus as my Savior, He would change me, and He'll bring in that conviction. And I will no longer be able to be there with sin around me and be in peace and be comfortable. There's conviction. And I pray today, there's conviction. I don't know your stories. I don't know where you're at. I don't know what you're doing. Scripture says you know them by their fruits, though. What fruits are you producing? What fruits are you showing to the world? What drives you? What motivates you? What moves you? What encourages you? Are there things of the world that get you excited? Or is it the things of God? The fact that we had the opportunity one day to meet in heaven with Jesus Christ, the one who died on the cross for me. One day I'm going to be there. And you know what? I'm not taking my sins with me. Can't. Better learn to let go of it now. And if you're having that much of an issue letting go of it, hit your knees, telling you, Lord God, come into my life. Convict me of that sin. Lord, I want that remorse. Because remorse is what's going to cause you to change. When you're truly sorry for that sin. Not sorry you got caught, but sorry that you even did it. And there's not one of us that's exempt from that. So you want change? I got one word for you. Jesus. True Jesus. Surrender. Lay it down. Let those things go. And the scripture says, then all things become new. Man, I'm excited about that. He's going to take those sinful habits away. Desires, he's going to work with me. I'm going to pray. He said, Lord, change my desires that for that sin. But then he says, all things become new. A new creature. Man, I like new. Who likes new? Anybody awake? Am I the only one excited? Amen. Amen. I see a hand in the back. I like that. I'm excited because he's going to make me new. Every day he's making me new. You know what days he doesn't make me new? You know what days I stay stagnant? You know what days I'm just sitting there thinking, oh, Lord, I got too many issues. I got too many problems. You know what days those are? Those are the days when I didn't open this. Those are the days when I have one layer of dust. I didn't talk to my Lord this morning. I didn't hear what he had to say. I didn't hear the warnings he gave me about the sin that was coming my way. Or the things that were going to happen. He said, I got something for you in this word. I'm going to change you. I'm going to make you new. But if you want new, if you want a new car, where are you going to go? The gas station? You can't go to the car lot because you want a new car. Well, I want a new soul. I want a new, I want a new life. So I'm going to go to God. Because he's the one that created him. He's the one that created me. He's the one that created you. And this scripture, inspired by God, and he used Paul, the Paul, the person who was persecuting the church, he used him and a large portion of this to speak to me, to tell me about change, to tell me about what Jesus could do in my life. And then I take it and I share it. That's your job too. Take it and share it. Become new. There's victory in Jesus. Didn't we just play that song? I didn't plan that either. It just hit me. There's victory in Jesus. How about that? Because God is good. And all the time? I haven't heard that one in a while. I love that. So going back to Saul, the change that was seen in his life was evident. As again, Scripture says, you will know them by their fruit. You know, what do you think? Of, when you hear that Scripture, you will know them by their fruit, what do you think? You start looking around. Look at their fruit. That looks like a rotten apple. <laughs> that fruit, a rotten tomato has come my way. <laughs> we want to look at other people's basket of fruit so we can judge, so we can say, man, you got bad fruit. I'm going to give you a challenge for this week. You might not like me after this, but I want you to be a fruit inspector. 
in your own house. I want you to be a fruit inspector in your own lives. You're going to look at your fruit. And here's the thing here. When you look at your fruit to inspect that fruit, what are you going to compare it with? Jesus, right? And how are we going to know what Jesus, who he is? So my challenge is get into his word this week. Pray first. Lord God, reveal to me what you want me to take away this day. Open it. Read it. See what it says. Inspect your fruit with this as your criteria. This is your guide. And when you see that fruit starts to smell, you see those little fruit flies flying around? Get out that Jesus spray. <laughs> Save me, Jesus. Save me. And watch him work. It might hurt. It might stink. That Jesus spray, Jesus spray may, spring, may sting a little bit. But it's going to heal you. Remember when you were a kid and you got a cut? How come they didn't have peroxide when I was a kid? They always use alcohol. It burns more. Why? And my kids cry because peroxide burns. Not as much as alcohol. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Side note. <laughs> but it burns because it's killing the germs, right? Sometimes we got to burn a little spiritually to kill the sin. And to remind us, that sin's bad for me. I don't want any more of that. You know, the burn, the sting from that alcohol is much, is much better than having to go get your foot cut off because it got infected. Clean it up. So spiritually, that's just a foot. Who needs a foot? I got another one. But I only have one soul. This is where it gets serious. One soul, one chance. You want to make a choice for Jesus Christ? Are you willing to change? My question for you today, are you willing to change? Are you willing to let go of those little sins, those big sins, any sin? Are you willing to let it go for eternity? Keep this in mind. The sin in this life, the things that bring you pleasure right here, right now, are only going to be there for a while. Remember this little bitty dot. Got one little dot. And I'm going to enjoy that dot to the best of my ability, even if I lose all of this. It doesn't make sense. It's time to let that sin go. It's time to say, Lord God, take it from me. Take the sin. Take the desire. I know it's going to be hard. I know it's going to burn. But I'd rather have a little burn here than an eternal burn in eternity. It's a choice, guys. It's a choice. What are you here for? And God has you here for a reason. He wanted you to hear this for a reason. Whether it's for you or for you to take somebody you know, of course, that's always the easy out. Remember, inspect your fruit first. See where you're at with Christ. As our musicians come forward,